For big cubes, the top three methods are reduction, yao, and hoya. Hoya! <laughs> yao! Each of these methods has their pros and cons, so I'll go over how they work and I'll give my opinion on them at the end. The first is the reduction method, which is very similar to the beginner method. You should learn how to do this properly before learning how to do Yao or Hoya. So you start by making a full center of any color, then you make the center directly across from it. Next you hold the centers on the side and make one, two, three centers along here and the last one will solve itself. Next you pair up all these edge pieces, and this is where in the beginner method you would find your pieces, put them together, replace it with an unsolved one, and then fix all the centers. But in the better edge pairing method called free slice, we don't fix the centers and just keep going. During the free slice stage, you have to get pieces across from each other without messing up the centers ever, which means that this or this have to always be the top and bottom. You can never hold it so that the centers are messed up vertically. Or you can always have these as the left and right and work this way, but no matter what, you always have to have the centers oriented the same direction so that you never mess up the centers in this direction. So what I'm doing is called edge pairing on E because I'm turning this side, and if you turn it this way then this would be called edge pairing on M. I personally use edge pairing on E and it is more popular this way so I'll keep going this way. So I'm trying to solve white green and I can put this one into here with R U prime R prime and then I can pair them all together. If it was in this case instead then R U prime R prime wouldn't work because I'd have to then flip one of them which would be slow. So instead if I wanted to go into this spot flipped then I can do reverse sledgehammer or hedge which is F R prime F prime R. Another thing I could do is just insert it into the back and then I can still pair them up together like this. And you use the same idea after solving an edge, you don't just replace it with something random like this. Instead, you wanna make sure you get something that helps you solve more pieces. So I would, for example, take this one and insert it into here so I can solve yellow green here and continue working on yellow green. Once all the centers are made and the edges are paired, then you solve it like a 3x3. Three three. For example, this is the cross, this is an F2L pair, and this is a PLL. Reduction is a great method, but it has some problems that Yao and Hoya attempt to address. Specifically, these methods address two hard things about reduction. During edge pairing in reduction, you have to look at the top and the bottom, which means constantly flipping the cube over. This makes it harder on look ahead and also adds cube rotations. Next is after you finish the reduction step, then you have to make the cross. And this is not easy to do because the pieces can be anywhere and it's something you normally do in inspection for three by three. So let's start by looking at how Yao addresses these problems. So this is how Yao works, but not the whole thing. I'm just gonna assume you know how reduction works now and I'll only show you the steps from Yao that are different. The first step is to make two opposite centers, but one of them has to be your cross color, which means if you're not color neutral, then you're restricted on what your first center is. Next, we'd start making cross edges. So for example, I can do white and orange. So I can put one of them here and then put the other one here. Now they are oriented the same way and I can join them together from here. And since no centers are made along here, then I only need one move to join them together like that. And here's the last white orange. And then I would insert that into the cross. So I'd make more cross edges without breaking what I've made and then insert that into the cross in the correct order for the cross. So as you can see, the centers go blue orange and this is also blue orange. After making three cross edges, there are two options from here. One thing you can do is ignore the last cross edge and start solving all the centers. The concept for solving centers is the same except the cross is here. So you have to make sure that the only face turns you do on the centers are right here. So if I wanna turn the red side, that's fine. But if I wanna turn the green side, I need to do this. So once you finish all of the centers, you would turn the cube like this and go into free slice edge pairing, except the first edge that you solve will be this one. Then if the centers are solved, I can insert this into the cross with F, but often when you make this cross edge, the centers are not solved and you can insert it into the cross with R prime F prime R F and then continue with free slice edge pairing as usual, the same as reduction. Or after three cross edges, you can solve the last cross edge and instead of putting it into the cross, you would put it on the other side. If you put it into the cross, we can't make the centers. So you put it on the other side and you can attach it to a bar like this. And so now this will never get broken as long as you never break this bar. So after you solve the center that this is attached to, which by the way, does not have to be the correct color. It can be any center then you would move on to the next centers and it would be exactly the same as if this cross edge wasn't here. Then once you finish all of the centers, you can solve that cross edge like that and hold the cube like this to go into free slice edge pairing. Now let's look at the Hoya method. So with Hoya, you start by solving two opposite centers again, except these cannot have your cross color on it. Next along here, you solve two centers and you leave the other two centers, but the two that you solve have to specifically be your cross color and any color next to it. Then hold your cross color on the bottom and the unsolved centers on the front and top. 
So from here, we solve all the cross edges and we don't have to solve them one at a time. So the idea of how this works is here's a white blue that's solved and we'll solve another white blue, which is this one, which can be put into here with R U prime R prime. And here's another type of case you can get if white is on top and you want to insert it into here, it'll take more moves where you have to first reorient it. So I can reorient it like this. And then now I can insert it into here like this. So I'll make a whole cross example because I have no Hoya videos on my channel, but just keep in mind, I don't do Hoya, so this may not be so great. So here I have white red, I could keep going, but this one and this one are both not oriented great. As you can see, this one's white on top and this one I'd have to do a B prime if I want white on the side, not top, which is better, but I could just go on to green instead. So I have one green there and I have to make sure again, blue, green, this is where green goes because of the color scheme. So I have two green pieces here and it would be quicker to insert this one but it would misorient this one over here. So instead I could just insert this one first or insert this one with a slice move. So for example, this one insert first would look like this, and then I can insert this one afterwards like that. Next I can move on to orange. So I have this piece, this piece, and this piece. So what I could do is pair up these two. Then I can insert this into here, which also reorients this one to not have white on top, which makes it better. So basically anytime you have a piece here and you're pushing it through the top, then that changes its orientation. So if it was a good piece right now, I wouldn't want to do that, but it, since it is a bad piece with white on top, then I will do this to insert this one. Then I can insert this one into here. And now I have to do red. So red here, I have my pieces here and here. So I can first take this one out like that, and then I can solve this one, and that reorients this one. So I know it reorients this one because the way I'll solve this, which is a bad piece, is by doing this to put it here. And as you can see, this one is now reoriented because I've pushed it through the top. And then to insert this one here, what would happen is I would just reorient this one to be bad again. So instead of doing it that way, I can just choose any different way I'm doing it. For example, move this one here, insert, or I can move it to the back and insert like this. And lastly, insert this one. Once you finish the cross, then you do FL, and that hides two cross edges, and you can solve the last two centers the way you would for any method. Once these two centers are solved, you would undo this. So making the cross edges has not affected the efficiency of the centers in any way, unlike with Yao. With Yao or Hoya, once you finish the free slice step and solve four edges, then you get to last four edges and you can do one of a few things. If it is easy to do so, what you can do is solve F2L pairs, and ideally you just want to solve two of them like this. Then you can hold these at the back, never look at them again, and you can solve cycles from this side. For example, when I slice here, whatever I put here is going to get put back with the yellow orange. So I can put that one here and slice back and that's solved. Something else I can do is when I slice here, whatever I slice back is going to get paired up with this yellow blue right here. So I can put this yellow blue here, slice back, and now this one's solved. Then you can continue using cycles and slice flip slice to help you solve the rest of the edges. Or you don't have to solve F12 pairs, you can just go into your last four edges. So to go into last four edges, one thing you could do is leave them all where they are and look for easy cases such as this one, where I can solve this whole thing with a slice flip slice. Then I can solve these two and this one with an M prime U2 M, M prime U2 M U2 to solve the cross edge. And then lastly, these. So this is one case where it's fine to leave them all where they are. Well, the other thing you can do is take out two edges. So for example, I can take out this one and this one because I like this one. So L prime U to take out this one, L2 U to take out this one. And then I have these two edges and I can turn to face them and then solve these with cycles like I showed earlier. My recommendation is to solve one or two F2L -well pairs only if it's super easy. Plus you can't always solve two F2L -well pairs if you've solved a bunch of yellow edges. Let's see how Yao and Hoya compared to reduction starting with Yao. When you're doing Yao during the cross edges step, when you pair up the edges, you actually can do it in fewer moves than with reduction. This is because the way you pair them up just means putting them in opposite slices and joining them together, and that usually takes only a few moves. The big downside for Yao is it adds a lot more moves for centers. So if we're making the orange bar here, then we'd have to do one, two, three to make the bar, which is the same as reduction, but then to align this bar vertically, with reduction, you just add one more move. But with Yao, that breaks this, so you'd have to add three more moves instead. 
So Yao centers will always have extra moves, but you can decrease the amount of extra moves by adding slice moves. So for example, inserting this bar into here, what you'd want to do is insert it, and then also to turn the front to get the blue solved, then you'd want to move this down as well. Instead, you can do both of those at the same time using a slice move. Then the major benefit for Yao is that since your cross is solved, then you never have to look at the bottom for edge pairing. So as you're making edges, you have a view of the top and these pieces, and you never have to look to the bottom or turn the cube upside down, which also saves on cube rotations. And lastly, it's a lot easier to transition into 3x3 stage because your cross is already solved. On Hoya, before last two centers when you make the cross edges, this step can actually be less efficient than making edges with reduction. So if we have edges that are oriented well to go in, then they take about the same number of moves as reduction, which is around 4, but for edges that are not oriented the way you want them, then you have to fix them first like this, and then you can insert it into the cross. Then after the cross and the centers, you're in the same exact position as with Yao, so you have the same look ahead benefit and cross being solved benefit. So from 4x4 up to 7x7, which method should you use for each of them? Well, I use Yao for all of them, and I'll explain why later. But what you have to remember are the basic facts, Yao and Hoya are better for look ahead. Besides that, Yao makes some edges more efficient, but it also makes the centers less efficient. And Hoya just makes the edges less efficient. So if you were to pick Hoya, it's always a pretty clear trade-off. You're using more moves in order to get better look ahead. Keep in mind that as you increase cube size, there become more and more edges, which means that you add more and more moves to get the better look ahead. But you could also argue that look ahead is a lot more important on bigger cubes than smaller cubes because it's harder to find pieces, so maybe that trade-off is worth it. So remember, I'm not an expert on Hoya, but if you ask for my opinion, I would say that if you had to pick between reduction and Hoya, just pick the same method for all of them. If you think you can achieve great look ahead, then you will be better with reduction for sure. And if you want look ahead to be easier at the cost of more moves, then just pick Hoya for all of them. In my opinion, it doesn't really make sense to use reduction for some and Hoya for some others. But things get complicated when we throw in Yao. So remember, Yao makes edges better but centers worse. Which one is more important? Well, that actually depends on cube size. As you can see, a 4x4 compared to 6x6, 6x6 has twice as many edge pieces on each edge. But 6x6 also has four times as many centers. So what that means is as you increase cube size, you actually get more centers relative to the number of edges. So that means on smaller cubes you can say that the edge benefit of Yao is really good because the centers barely matter. But on bigger cubes the downside to centers really starts to make a difference and the benefit for edges is a lot smaller. So Yao is pretty special on 4x4 because when you make the centers you barely add any more moves with Yao. My guess is that Yao centers adds like 3 or 4 moves compared to reduction centers, but the edges are a lot more efficient and the look ahead is so much better. So on 4x4, the reason Yao is the best is because if you were to pick between Reduction and Hoya, you're doing a trade-off of look ahead versus move count. But if you pick Yao versus Reduction, it's just better move count and better look ahead. And if you pick Yao versus Hoya, it's similar look ahead but better move count. Now for the bigger cubes, I don't know what's better between Yao and Reduction. People tend to think that 5x5 is where it is about similar. So whether you used Yao or Reduction on 5x5, you'd probably do equally as well. I can agree with this in theory, but I also think Yao is just easier, it's an easier method on every single cube, and that's why I'm really confident in using Yao on 5x5. But when it comes to 6 and 7, I'm not sure. The popular opinion is that anything 6x6 and up, reduction is better than Yao. That is because it saves a lot of moves, but look ahead also becomes more important, and this is kind of a gray area on what you should pick between Yao, reduction, and Hoya. So instead, I'll just tell you what the world record holders use. Yao, reduction, reduction, reduction. But with that being said, I use Yao for all of them, and my reasoning for that is because I already use Yao on 4x4 because it's the best method. When I learned 5x5, I just used Yao and reduction, and eventually I was just faster with Yao, maybe because I was used to it from 4x4. But also Yao is just easier because look ahead is easier. Obviously Yao does require more other skills, like a look ahead during the cross edges, but you need to be really, really good at look ahead if you're using reduction, versus with Yao, you just need to be like pretty good at a Lot of things, and it's a lot easier to be decent at some things than to excel at one. Then on 6 and 7, again for a similar reason, I don't feel like I put enough effort into these two events to really show that reduction can be better, because again I need a lot better look ahead, and I don't think I'm going to achieve that with the amount of practice I choose to put into these events. And that's why I think that for me, I will always be faster with Yao on these cubes than I will be with reduction. So I think for me, fun plays a big factor in this, and definitely don't pick anything but Yao on 4x4 because being fast is pretty fun. But on the bigger cubes where it makes a smaller difference, then I would say if you're trying to be as fast as you can, then you should probably pick reduction just based on the fact that the world records are set on that so you can't really go wrong. But if you're a little bit more casual on the big cubes and you don't want to get frustrated with how hard look ahead can be with reduction, then I think it would definitely be a lot more fun and less frustrating with Yao or Hoya. 
So keep all those in mind and make sure you're not just using Yao because I use Yao. If your goal is to set a world record, it makes sense to follow what they do. And if your goal is just to have fun, then you can do whatever you want. Unless you think fun is just being fast and good to look ahead, then yeah, use reduction. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.